Jesus asked me to tell the church, to come into communion more intensely with him, to increase the search, the intimacy and the adoration to him. Jesus asked the church to organize, to unite, and to march. He said to obey the gospel and to discipline their bodies in holiness. Jesus said to resist the trials and when you pray to ask for spiritual resources in this fight. Ask for spiritual weapons and training to face this war. And when the church joins in that same purpose, it gets stronger. If a soldier is strong, imagine an army raised to battle. I had a vision of a soldier equipped with armor. This soldier was clothed with obedience, daring, liveliness, boldness, courage, security, strength, determination, persistence, dignity, faith, prudence, leadership, tenacity, separated from the world, servant of the living God, victorious in war. I asked the Lord the meaning of this vision. He said, I will raise people with that quality. Holiness Jesus said, Faithful servant, warn these people to preserve holiness after their deliverance. I want this church to close their eyes to the things of the world. I want no more conflict between them. I want cooperation and love in their interactions and in the breaking of bread. I want to see this church united in one spirit and made into an unshakable rock. Tell them if they obey my word, they will never be denied any spiritual resources from heaven. And I will always pour my renewal into their lives, like the flames when they fail and I will be their strength in difficult times. I want you to grow spiritually and have activity in the work. Those who follow my word will not die spiritually. The decision to sanctify is in the hands of the church. To those who obey I will sustain them in my presence and I will be the solution to their problems. As I passed these revelations to the church the people rejoiced, and heaven descended within them. I saw a noise of a wind coming into the four corners of the church. It was the presence of the Holy Spirit that filled that place. I say to all, to have a healthy spiritual life without any demonic influence, it is necessary to live a life of practice and prayer. Rebuild your foundations from today on. Every verse of the Bible will rebuild your spiritual structure. Holiness attracts holiness. When the Holy Spirit sees a clean temple, he approaches it and all his heat burns the body of its impurities, all his light penetrates the sanctified body and goes to the marrow of the soul. Holy doctrine kindles the flame that has gone out. All it takes is the reaction of a sincere prayer for the flame to ignite. The more you pray, the more the fire of God ignites in your life. You who do not walk in holiness will one day die, and to whom will you give up your souls to? I went home and talked to my wife about starting a women's ministry. The church is growing and the number of women prayer warriors has only increased, they are eager to do street evangelism. My wife agreed to have a women-only evangelism group. I went to pray at midnight. I was worried about my ministry. In prayer, I told Jesus, when I die, who will continue the ministry that my father did not finish. And when I arrived at my house to pray I had a vision of a great city. The demons made sin multiply all over this city. It is the nest of demons installed in that city. Sin is in the big cities, where spiritual values are reversed and the places became a bad influence for children. These evil societies are building an unbelieving generation. All these cities are headed toward hell. I saw these people burning like rubbish in hellfire just like Jaina in the Bible. They looked like garbage in ragged robes, torn and filthy. These cities had parties, drinks, prostitution, drugs and everything you cannot even imagine. I saw the nest of demons in the great centers of the city. These cities are places of corruption of the human races, where the churches suffer to preach the doctrine. The garbage of sin is scattered in the cities. Christians living in these cities suffer greatly from the effects of the malignity of these places. We have to pray a lot and are constantly vigilant not to be surprised by the bad. The evil that is in the cities afflict families and it is in these places that there is a concentration of sin. I saw in the vision devils enthroned in urban centers. These cities are branches of great Babylon that will soon appear in this world. I saw new attractions of these cities attracting people to death. 
in the vision all these cities united to form Great Babylon. Jesus rescued a drunken man from the garbage dump of that city. He was cleansed from his sins and redeemed from perdition. Today he is a great man who preaches the word. Drug addicts have been released by God and taken from this world by his glory and given the grace to become the men of God. There are still teachers who teach the pure word of Jesus and take good care of the sheep so they do not get lost. They have brought the people deceived by the false prophets to the holy fold of God. These sheep are clean with the word of God and healed of false doctrines. Sick souls are being cared for by serious men who do not mix the holy gospel with false doctrine. Seeing this vision, the Lord said, My servant shall protect the flock from false doctrines and forbid them from attending false preachers preaching, they have their names written in my book of life. Jesus showed me in the vision a flock that belongs to a shepherd. The herd was covered in wool and wounded. Jesus said, Look how this flock is enticed by the false prophets. Spiritual Warfare, Five Plans of Satan I will reveal the five plans of Satan to destroy an entire church that walks in holiness. The first plan is theology and human knowledge. No theology written in books or taught in courses fights sin hard. Today's theologies come with a teaching that nothing is a sin. I thought of doing theology at the beginning of the ministry, but the Holy Spirit did not allow it and said, Theology is carnal and always goes against what is supernatural. The experiences that you will have, no book of theology can explain. Many men who had faith in spiritual things did theology that killed their faith. Theology has denied my truth. The second plan of Satan for the church is to gain the greatest number of souls from the churches of truth. The third plan of Satan is to cool the church, causing the people not to pray, only thus will it infiltrate the church. The fourth plan of Satan is to bring sin into the church, taking away the spiritual authority of the people. The fifth plan of Satan is to win the minds of the people, with the doctrine of blessing and wealth. He wants to replace the gospel of holiness with the gospel of prosperity. Spiritual warfare through darts These five plans of Satan are to gain the lost territories and reign within the church. The doctrinal confusions that came from theology is a weapon of Satan to win souls. What is at issue in this war is the crown of the eternal life of believers. I have seen spiritual darts that cause the spiritual death of the believer, darts paralyzing the spiritual life of prayer, darting sickness to the body, mental dart to reach the minds of believers, causing depression and suicide, a doctrinal dart that causes confusion in the mind and makes one stop believing that holiness is important. They threw these darts at a long distance. These darts did damage to the spiritual lives. It is necessary to put on the celestial armor. The weapons of believers are prayer, holiness, vigilance, and endurance. Demons do not want Christians to have these weapons. They hold meetings to neutralize Christians, to control their lives by taking their time to seek God. The devil has many weapons of spiritual destruction to end the church. Spiritual warfare through worldly things These darts that undermine the spiritual forces are in technology internet, television, social networks, and secular music. I saw the demon saying to hide the darts in these things. Any believer who gets involved with these things will have their lives attacked. The demons will not attack the church that makes an alliance with the world, for these are theirs and live for them. I saw the demons attacking the believer by surprise, quick attack without waiting. Believers who did not watch were caught in spiritual traps that caused their spiritual falls. Spiritual warfare through prayerlessness Jesus showed me a multitude of dead bodies. I said, What is the meaning of this vision? Jesus answered, It is the spiritual deaths of many believers who do not pray, no longer feel my presence and have lost the pleasure of seeking my presence. They are in the church every day, but it is as if they did not have to be away from me. These were dominated by sin and victims of the demons. The church has no choice but to confront the power of darkness. Prayers are attacks on the spiritual forces of evil and the word destroys all lies. Spiritual warfare through false prophets Jesus continued, the spiritual war of infiltration within the churches is commanded by Satan where false prophets preach in holy churches to destroy holy doctrine. 
These agents are spies who study the ministry to destroy it. The spiritual warfare is on the doctrinal reform of the church and replacing holy scriptures with the modern gospel. Satan is working to change the gospel by putting another type of teaching. Change the praises with profane lyrics with rhythms of hell. Satan is using demons to wreak war on denominations. At that moment there are several theological currents swarring against holy doctrine. Jesus showed me in the vision the false prophets manipulating people's minds about holiness, saying that nothing is a sin. I have also seen the false prophets propagating deceitfully about their churches, talking about spiritual things that will never happen. And the media are used by them to advertise their prophecies. They want to garner the largest number of souls to increase church income and the media is a propaganda weapon. Spiritual warfare trough false teachings Several teachings say that the sanctification of the body is not necessary. Satan planned to attack the truth by creating diversities of teaching, saying that hell does not exist. I saw all this in a secret Satan meeting when I was snatched up in the spirit. He is having a war of various false doctrines against the holy word of God. He is having a spiritual warfare using false gifts and revivals that are not from God. All this to deceive the people. Satan also planned this so that the people will not come to sanctify themselves, and even in sin, they will be used with gifts and authorities. It is having a spiritual warfare within the church itself in the part of the union, but it is Satan causing discord. Because of this war, many are leaving the church and opening their own ministry for the sake of making money. These brothers have dragged crowds of people from serious churches to open a church of lies. I also saw and vision these weak people, falling into demonic prisons of sin. A group of devils was desperate because of an inner church that still kept the truth in their hearts. I saw a vision as the legions of demons became unstructured as the church began to pray for three months without stopping. The devil's strategy is to enter into a church that has not yet sinned. They want to take over the power of all ministries to have all the souls in their hands. When they take over the ministry they will release their doctrines of demons into the church. The sacred mysteries will be replaced by profane errors, the churches that are established in sound doctrine. Satan will use those who do not live the gospel to disrupt and disorganize the church. Spiritual warfare through slander The strategy of demons is to make a group of believers who do not abide by holy doctrine to defame those who preach the truth. Satan chose a group of believers who have not yet been born again to be the opposition of God's true servants. The demons are already breaking up the church of Christ by dividing the people. Jesus revealed to me a group of believers attacking pastors, who are committed to God. They used the internet in the popular media to slander, telling lies about the man of God. The people gave credit to those who preach against holy doctrine to get rid of the obligation to walk in holiness. Many pastors want the doctrine of the sanctification of the body to end in all churches. The demons want to put one against the other inside the church to wear down the members of the body of Christ. This will weaken the church for the demons to control the house of God. Satan knows that a disunited church cannot defeat him. All that I am saying was spoken at the meeting of the demons. Angels of light false prophets false anointings I had a vision of millions of angels going to various churches. I rejoiced when I saw those celestial beings. Jesus told me, why are you glad? This saddens me, son, they are angels of light, deceitful spirits who imitate the works of the Holy Spirit. They have the false prophets to carry out their plans of destruction. These false prophets when they receive these demons no longer have a normal life. This is the false Holy Spirit that the false prophets are giving to the people. A pirate copy of it, a fake imitation. These deceiving spirits will take their mouths in prophecy and they will think it is my spirit. In the vision I saw millions of spirits that produce warmth within the church, imitating the Holy Spirit. People prophesied, jumped, fell to the ground, shouted, danced and crawled dust from the heat. When the false prophets said to receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I saw many people giving place to receive their evil portions. I saw a blackened oil pouring into the heads of these people. 
These people thought it was the work of the Holy Spirit and they laughed at the power they thought to be of the Holy Spirit. I saw the garments of these muddy people, there was no purity in their spiritual lives. Their biggest mistake is to think that they can receive the Holy Spirit without sanctification. I saw millions of light spirits who are not from God going to other churches. They have transfigured themselves into angels of deceit, resembling the heavenly. Jesus said to me, these same spirits are of the Kardecist spiritualism that they incorporate in the people saying that it is the person who died are inside profane churches. They also appear in witchcraft with other names, and now in the false churches, they pass off as the Holy Spirit. They are deceivers. And more people are submitting to them in deception thinking they are experiencing the warmth of the Holy Spirit. One of the greatest religious decoys of our time is Kardecist spiritualism. The followers of Kardec believe that they live the authentic Christianity. Kardecism preaches mediumship, charity as a table of salvation, reincarnation as necessary to the evolution of spirits. The false prophets said, Thus saith the Lord, Today I will anoint you as kings of this land. And the Christians are called to the front and a demon poured the black coil on the heads of the believers who went there. The false prophets soon spilled anointed oils on the heads of those brothers and prophesied a false anointing. Those believers fell to the ground with their bodies all trembling. From that moment they were raised with the same authority of the false prophets to perform their false works. They received false gifts to perform miracles invested with the authority given by false prophets. Jesus showed me the filthy waters coming out of the interior of these false prophets. I saw a demon say, I reign in this place, I am their God, they do my will, I will operate here until they receive their crowns of eternal life. The demon gave a terrible laugh. I saw the demon of sensuality masquerading as the Holy Spirit. He uses sensual women in prophecies. False churches in the vision, I saw devils speaking of sects and false churches. One of them said, we are feeding their souls with our teachings. We have great religions that work in our favor. We are penetrating the churches through false doctrines. The shepherds spread our teaching by poisoning the body of Christ. We are entering very slowly into the true churches without them to perceive. Churches that are close to the things of the world and forbid everything are already putting our words in the mouth of many without them knowing that they are already preaching our doctrine. Our theology that has entered many churches in worship services teaches that nothing is a sin. We use our agent to preach our concepts of new doctrines. The shepherds are not watching and call our agents to preach. And the teachings of our agents are already being copied by serious pastors. And the church is nurturing our food, taking possession of the false teaching. We are responsible for varieties of doctrines that are being scattered throughout the churches. We are building a people based on the false doctrines that are already part of many churches. They are growing in our grace and in our knowledge. We are developing a new church far from what the apostles planned. Our teaching comes with darkness to blind the shepherd's understanding. There are few who preach the truth and there are many who preach falsehood. The true gospel is increasingly rare in churches, this is a victory. Our word is reigning in the churches and the true gospel is equal to hard gold to be found. We are contaminating the saints within the body of Christ, we invade their territories and we are gaining more and more space. The pulpits are already ours and we are sitting in the chairs of their altars of the churches. The internet is full of our preaching that is taken to the churches. Every time they feed on our word, they feed on us because we are the false word. We are in the prophetic acts of the flesh. We are the theology of positive confession. We are the theology of prosperity. We are the theology of healing and the miracle without salvation. We are the theology of liberation. Just as the man in white in his word produces life, our word produces death. We are the truth mixed with a lie. We are spreading false prophecies, false revelations, false miracles, and false healings and the people of the church do not know how to discern what is from their God and what is ours. They are unnoticed and we are causing confusion within the churches. We are having the false birth of those who become churches that prostitute themselves with Satan. 
This new spiritual birth is not from God but from the devil. One is not born again where the lie is preached or it hides the truth. This generation that is becoming the false gospel also has a false birth that comes from the darkness. Satan implanted his spiritual embryos within the churches to give birth to children in the deception of the false doctrine. You can be a good person, a good worker, a person who likes to evangelize and have a spiritual birth, but still not be in the true gospel. Jesus has shown me in the sight of multitudes of false disciples being produced by the world through false teachers. They trained young people and sent them to make souls in their homes. The number of these disciples is frightening. They had no notion that they were taught by the false shepherds. They were deceived and taught in the false gospel that they spread within homes. They even hold meetings in their homes. But I say that you do not earn a soul for the kingdom of the heavens by teaching a liberal gospel without renunciation. The kind of demons I saw in the vision led to false doctrine for the church and with the time they come back to see how much the church has become corrupted. And several churches have already been contaminated. These demons were able to install the false gospel within these churches. They need legality to enter into the church system. When the church agrees with the doctrine of demons, there is a spiritual prostitution. From this prostitution, anyone who joins such a church will bear the fruit of her relationship with the world. It will be children of the prostitution of the church with the unborn devil of a prostitute bride who betrayed Jesus by diverting from his doctrine to follow that of the evil one. Jesus said, the gospel of truth within a polluted church is like a spiritual eye drop that heals a deceived people from blindness. I had a vision with the demons possessing the preachers on top of the pulpits. These demons are getting bolder every day. Do you know why this is happening? Because the church lost its discernment and no longer see the evil that took the holy altar. Formerly the altar was for the servants of God worthy to be there. Today it is not like that anymore. The demons are working in the minds of many pastors to change the truth into a lie. I had a vision of a devil with an evangelical book in his hand. Jesus said the truth mixed with a lie is in that book and no one notices. A mixture of two types of water cannot flow out from a single source. Neither can light be in communion with darkness. How can the truth mix with the lie together? For these devils everything is possible, good and evil are in alliance. These demons are intelligent. They know that they cannot destroy the truth and do away with the churches. Matthew 16 18 And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Satan's plan is not war but union by making the church covenant with the world to weaken it. Unite the lie with the truth to destroy sound doctrine. I had a vision of an evangelical book and out of it came snakes when people opened it. They were pricked and the venom of snakes penetrated their souls. That's how a church is contaminated by false doctrine. These demons are implanting these seeds in people's hearts through false preaching. These seeds grow inside their hearts and become fruitless trees. Inside the book, I saw snakes coming out, I saw darkness in the letters. The demons that came out of this book are deceitful spirits working within the church that carries their teachings. Spirits of seduction I saw the spirit of the catwalk using a sister. This spirit also works in the lives of models and transforms appearances leaving them with seductive looks. I have seen the spirit of hair straightening and painting that leaves women's hair on TV commercial looking like a seductress. I also saw the spirit of masculine sensuality. Men who wear shorts, walk without shirts, and wear tight clothing on their bodies. I have seen male seducing demons that induce brothers into adultery, fornication, and prostitution. These demons used believers who were not delivered from immorality. They got out of pornographic movies, magazine pictures, and sexy women's Facebook, and enter into their minds of the believers. Catholic and Evangelical Charismatic False Pentecost I saw a Catholic church where a priest told people to give way to the Holy Spirit. When he said that, the people would fall to the ground and rest in the Spirit. Those people fall into a spiritual slumber when they fall to the ground. I saw the demon of idolatry masquerading as the Holy Spirit and deceiving the priest. 
I also saw an evangelical church and the pastor of that church made people sleep. They received a knockout and fell to the ground like dead and there was a demon responsible for the deceit. False fire after this vision, I went to visit a church. I had a vision of rains of fire falling from the sky. The church was hit with that rain, but me. I asked Jesus in my prayer because I felt nothing in the rain. The Lord said, You are clothed in my armor, these drizzles of darkness cannot penetrate your body. Angel of light false prophecy Soon after I saw a horrible monster entering the church and transfigured into an angel of light. He appeared to a sister making her rejoice. That sister received a prophecy from that demon inside the church. She told the whole congregation that she saw the angel inside the church. The people began to glorify God. She said, that the angel brought him a prophecy to give to the people and told them everything. I knew it was a demon cheating on that sister. I went home when the service ended and I went to pray until three in the morning. An angel appeared to me and said, Today I will take you to show you hell. I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit saying, Do not believe, it is not from God. I cast out that spirit of light that came to bring me a message. The Holy Spirit said, Those who have a covenant with me, I will not let the demons deceive them. Praying I had a wonderful vision of the anointing in church. It is sparkling and looks like tiny stars. I always felt the anointing but seeing it was something extraordinary. This vision I had of the anointing taking the church only happens in prayer. How important it is to pray. It is no use to pray three or four hours in one day and then not to pray anymore. Prayer must be done daily, do not let the flame go out, feed it with your knees on the floor. Learn to keep a regular life in prayer. If you want to be used and see supernatural things happen, keep a prayer life. Do not be in a hurry for everything to happen and quickly becoming discouraged. There are a time and purpose for everything under the sky. Elisha waited to be anointed in Elijah's place to continue his mission. Joshua waited for Moses to die and God called him to replace Moses. Gideon stayed a long time in humiliation until he was called by God. David had patience and waited for Saul to die to sit on the throne. The Apostle Paul spent three years in the Arabian desert and spent another thirteen years in Tarsus before manifesting himself as a missionary. I spent three years praying and nothing happened until Jesus visited me. They are Christians who took two years of praying before they become a great prophet, others take more than three years. Each person has a time on earth to be manifested in his destiny, learn to be patient and learn to wait on God. Pastors who do not put their lives on the altar are not examples of true men of God in their homes or their jobs. Turn away from the people who lead you to sin but do not be enemies with them. Help him when he needs you but do not practice his deeds. Say no to what will make you sin, flee from the appearance of evil. Whoever seeks the truth, help him to find it and whoever sinned, help him to fix his life. Otherwise, the Christian returns to his old vomit and wallow in his former mud. Be imitators of Jesus. Of what is worth is knowledge without practice and wisdom without the anointing. What good is having Bible seminars and not being vessels of the Holy Spirit? What is the use of knowing the Word and not applying it in your life? Many want to confront the doctrine of holiness. They criticize, debate to destroy the faith and kill people spiritually. Decide today to live a holy life. Make a decision that will change your story forever. Do not change your way of being to please people. Just try to please God. These are the revelations that are passed on to the church. May the anointing of this witness come to build you. Amen. Holiness tell pastors that they like full churches. Make no mistake about the number of members. The church is measured not by numbers, but by holiness. A 10-member church that prays and lives in holiness is stronger than a 100-member church that does not do my will and live by practicing sin. I do not like the quantity who do not live my gospel. The demons do not fear churches like that. The church is measured spiritually depending on its position before me. The church has to grow in numbers of people, but also grow in grace. I want a people who surrender to me and put into practice everything that my word teaches. 
I want a church that is willing to give up worldliness. There is no use in learning my word and not living it. Born again those who are born again do not return to sin and they turn away from evil to maintain the purity of their garments. The flesh is weak, but if it is not mortified for the world it will take pleasure in sin. Our life is preserved from sin when we crucify and die to the self-life. When we are born of the Spirit we inherit the sanctified character which is one of the attributes of God. Those who are born again do not walk in darkness. They are serene, peaceful and have self-control. They are not nervous about the persecutions and they do not explode with anger. They can control their impulses and have quiet minds. I saw people fruitful by the Holy Spirit who gives good testimony in their homes before their family. Men who bear witness to change in their businesses and neighborhood. Young people of God who give good testimony in school, in a course, and in college. They are people who give examples of faith wherever they go, they shine through their holy lives and gain souls through their behaviors. People saw transformations in them and wanted that change for their lives. Many churches are spiritually dead and lack the power to transform lives. People go to their services empty and leave their services empty. In the church where I am pastoring, we are doing a job to provide spiritual services. People who visit us, cry under conviction during the preaching, become souls hungry and thirsting for God. They are satiated and their spirits are strengthened. The Holy Spirit has visited the empty, oppressed and depressed people who come to the church. They have surrendered their lives. The Holy Spirit has treated their souls fill their voids and renew those lives. My ministry is dependent on the Holy Spirit. We do not live a day of worship without Him visiting us. Someone brought a Christian in the wheelchair and God revealed to me that he is going to be a missionary. I bent my knee and said, Lord, how will he do the mission if he is a wheelchair? Jesus said, put your hands on his head and say a prayer, I will raise him to my glory, and everyone will know that I am the God of this place. I did as God told me and that man got up from the wheelchair. And many souls were converted that night and the church did not stop to glorify God. God had a great work for that paralytic, and he lifted him from the wheelchair to do the mission. The barrier that prevented this man from doing the work was his paralysis, but God removed it. And today may have healthy legs and do not want to go to church. They are sitting with their arms folded watching sin and seeing many go to hell. And after that paralyzed man walked, I had a vision with an angel that appeared to me. He came over and touched my hand and it caught fire. The angel said, Jesus today give you the gift of healing. After this vision, I began to pray with the laying on of hands and the sick were healed. This gift that was given by God heals the body and also the soul. I received a Christian who was abandoned by her husband. She's been serving God for 20 years. Jesus showed me in a vision a shattered vase. I said, Lord, what does that mean? He replied, It is the soul of this woman, pray for her. I put my hand on her head and prayed. In a week she was restored and her soul was healed, hidden sins demons I saw devils of hidden sins that suck the forces of those who do not want to renounce the world. I saw a variety of demons of various shapes, sizes, and hybrids, half man and half animal. Others looked like giant insects. These demons control people's souls through feelings. I had a vision of them owning half the church. These demons are so bold that they did not manifest and attended the services normally. They live inside people's bodies and do not leave even if they are going to church every day. They do not manifest in any church. They manifest themselves only in churches that have the mark of truth and the seal of the Holy Spirit. The demons manifested with the presence of Jesus, through the anointing that emanated from Jesus. But in a praying holy church, such demons cannot resist and hide and have to leave. Not all churches have authority from God to deal with this class of demons. There are few churches that lie the truth that is why these signs do not happen. These days we are witnessing a variety of weak churches with no anointing to cast out the demons. Churches that do not sanctify themselves and yet they cast out, 